Hi there, my name is Patricia and I'm with uh, CBC's uh, prison ministry uh, called Just Believe Prison Ministry. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of my testimony and um, let you guys know just why I'm so passionate on the things that I do for those that are incarcerated. Um, about 10 years ago I was incarcerated myself for about two years and that was my Kairos moment. That was my life changing moment with Jesus and ever since then I've come out and uh, been very passionate and on fire for um, God and um, letting those know where I once sat that there is hope. Uh, let me say this, that life is not promised to be easy and we all struggle and we've all done some things and are still doing some things and some of us will continue to do these things, but hopefully after this message, that'll change. Um, what are we doing about the things that we once did that are, we're still doing? And hopefully with prayer that we'll stop doing those things. As a child, my life was pretty outstanding. I had both parents in the home, uh, loving family, vacations, um, we were secluded. We moved out of um, the west side of San Antonio and moved into the north side of San Antonio back when uh, SeaWorld was just being developed. So we were very um, sheltered. And so um, as I was growing up, I didn't see a lot of things that majority, you know, of us now do today. Um, at the age of 24, I was introduced to the real world and um, being sheltered and protected and loved so much when I was offered uh, a line of cocaine by my baby's dad, um, I didn't think that it would hurt me because I've, I've never known anybody that loved me to introduce me to something that would cause pain or hurt. Well, that introduced the next 15 years of my life that began to go in a spiral down her downward motion and basically creating my own hell. <clears throat> Needless to say, I was in and out of jail. Um, my family was sick of my lies. Um, I was lying to myself, trying to say that I was a good mom, but even though I was physically present, mentally, and emotionally, I was an absent parent, and um, that wasn't good for them as well. Um, you know, we, we try to, to believe the lies of the world, and that's what winds up bounding bound, us to be enslaved by things that Jesus never meant for us to be tied down to. Um, I had never heard of Jesus up until um, I was incarcerated, but I remember passing by a church on one of my desperate, desperate escape attempts um, because I was wanted by the law. Um, and I remember passing by a church in the signs at the Hope Center. And I remember crying out saying, God, if you're real, this is what I need. I need some hope. I'm tired. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of living the life that it, I've been living, and I just, I just want to rest. I checked into a hotel. Um, nobody knew where I was at, not even my children. I had dropped them off at a, fa a family's um, member's house, and three days later, for some reason, um, there was something inside me saying that somebody was coming to get me, and I didn't know what. And so... Um, even though I was on drugs, I wasn't the paranoid type, but I kept looking out the window. And sure enough, around 2.15 in the morning, uh, there was an officer standing there, and he knocked on the door. And I opened the door, and he said, Patricia Castillo? And I said, yes. He said, are you ready? And I said, for what? He said, you called to turn yourself in. And I said, uh, nope. <laughs> and he said, yeah, you called to turn yourself in. And I said, no, I didn't. He said, well, I hate to break this to you, hon, but you have several warrants for your arrest. 
So I'm going to have to take you in. Not knowing then what I know now, Jesus answered my call. He, he rescued me. That was God himself. And what is so humbling about that is me. He heard me. He answered my call. I was so unworthy. I was hopeless. I was prideful. I was stubborn. I was greedy. I was selfish. I was so full of myself. I was confused. I was lost. I was scared. <clears throat> but most of all, I was at my end. And I needed help. And I needed relief. And even though I hadn't accepted him as my personal savior yet, he still heard my cry. Because now I know that was God himself that was standing at that door <clears throat> to rescue me. Because he hears the cry of his children, the chosen. So he came to rescue me. <clears throat> In prison, um, I began to hear more and more about Jesus and um, I would go to every Bible study I could and I just wanted more and more and more and more knowledge of him and it was a hunger like I couldn't get enough um, after I left Bear County Jail I wound up at a uh, pre-parole facility um, in Bridgeport Texas and there was a certain captain there her name was Captain Franklin and I will never forget Miss Franklin um, she would walk around saying one of her favorite quotes, life is about choices, ladies. And not so calmly, but she would say it very loudly and sternly. And that um, has been an understatement to the way I live life now every single day. Life is about choices. We can either choose to um, live in defeat or we can choose to live in victory that Christ did for us so, so long ago. Um, it was my choice though. Um, I felt that change, change was coming. And if I wanted it, I needed to grab it because it was here. So, like the woman that touched the hem of his garment, I pressed against everything that was ever spoken on me, everything that I've ever felt, um, every lie, and I pressed into him and I touched the hem of his garment. Now I am the change um, that he said that I was, and he has called me just like each and every one of us with our testimony to be the change that the world needs to see through our stories. That's why our stories are our stories. He created us to have them so that we can be the light to those and that they can run to us and ask us or spend time with us and find out how Jesus really transformed us <clears throat> I was the worst of the worst. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I had it all. I didn't care about anybody or anything. I didn't care on who I had to step on to get my way. I experienced uh, many things, you know, in my life, as I'm sure each and every one of you have as well. Struggles such as abandonment, <clears throat> abuse, addiction, pride, loneliness, unforgiveness, depression, Self-esteem, I had low self-esteem, no self-control, I was greedy, I was homeless at times, I was poor, I was rich, I was sad, I was mad, I was sick, and I, I was lifeless, I was just existing, and I was even suicidal. Whatever that may look to you, whatever that you're bound to, whatever you're enslaved to, I'm here to tell you through the word and through my testimony that the power of God, he is able to break anything that you may be feeling. 
He alone can repair the hurts, the pains, and the feeling of what you seem to think that is a meaningless life, that you have no worth, to how he showed me. He transformed my mind because today, even though I was once all those things, today I know that I'm a child of God and I'm thought about and I'm loved and I'm cared for. I have value and I'm beautiful and wonderfully made, that I have a purpose and I have dreams and my visions that will be completed because he gave them to me and they are real. I will walk with my head held up high because who is in me, not because of me myself. And that everywhere I go and everywhere that I touch will prosper because of his presence inside me. I'm favored and I can do all things. I'm a virtuous woman. Oh, am I a virtuous woman. I am redeemed, I'm healed, and I'm delivered. I have been set free. I'm called to give hope to the hopeless and give encouragement to the brokenhearted and help those that are bound in their minds to be set free on who they are so that they too can walk in the victory of Christ because he paid that at the cross and we are no longer those things if we just accept it. Not because of anything that's good in me, but because of him and all that he's done. I'm these things because of the one who has called me his daughter, his princess, his ambassador to be the light so that people can run to me and see Jesus and get what they need so that I can be the salt of the earth so that when I speak, I speak his words and they can ingest those and digest and feed on that so that it can take root and it can grow just like it did in me. Christ is real. He can transform. We have hope knowing that there is life and these feelings that we feel aren't final. But he is. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's my father, and he's yours too. And if he can do it in me, he can surely do it in you. So I don't know what you may be walking through, but I once lived a hopeless, existing life. That every day that I was living it up and I thought I was living the good life I was slowly killing myself and you may not have ever been in prison behind walls but we've all been in prison up here so hear the voice of the Lord and know that you are truly loved and he's calling you out he says come out Lazarus for you are alive in me Know who you are. Know who you are in Him. But not only know who you are, but know whose you are. Because once you realize who you belong to, there will be nothing that can stop you at all. He's given you all power and all authority to do the things that He has called you to do. Not only in heaven, but here on earth today. Release yourself. Set yourself free knowing that Jesus has given you the keys to do them. You've already been set free. It's just up to you to release yourself into what he's already done. We already have everything that he has the moment that you accept Christ. But we choose to live in defeat on what we can see. Do not let the environment change you. When you walk into an environment, be the change so that they can see Jesus is real. As always, may God bless you and keep you and always shine his face upon you. If there's anything that I can be praying for you for, please leave, let me know.
You can also hit me up on Facebook at Patricia Castillo Chavaria. And just leave me a message. If not, our email address is just believe prison ministry at outlook.com. I look forward to hearing from you. If I don't hear from you here, I know that I'll see you there. And as always, have a productive day for the kingdom. Jesus lives. Make a difference today.